welcome to Black Onyx Alternative Investments, where we hope to keep you better informed by bringing you face to face with South Africa's most talented asset managers. Today I'm introducing you to Greg Kamstra from Acumen Capital. Greg, thank you for your time today. Pleasure, Andrew. Thank you for the opportunity. Tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into the industry. Andrew, I began my journey in London. I uh, started working for a uh, British merchant bank, SG Warburg, uh, trading interest rates in European governments predominantly. In fact, only at that stage. Uh, went on to work at Merrill Lynch from, um, I think it was 93 to 2001. And again, it was predominantly on European government uh, bonds until 1999, when I came out to South Africa to run their interest rate uh, business for them in South Africa and uh, I left uh, Merrill Lynch in 2001, went to set up or, or enhance and uh, expand the fixed income uh, business at Citibank and left them after 18 months to go and uh, venture into private space and try and start um, exploring the hedge fund space. Uh, Peregrine, I set up a hedge fund, the second ever fixed income hedge fund in South Africa which I ran there for three years successfully. Uh, but it was, again, a joint venture with Peregrine, so obviously you're sharing a large amount of the spoils and there's you know, quite a lot of bureaucracy. And I guess at the end of the day, I uh, decided to move on again and just look for something that wasn't a joint venture with an existing corporate and was a standalone business. I stumbled across Acumen in 2007, and uh, having spent uh, two years with them, we expanded their product base to include a fixed income uh, hedge fund which, would, which has managed uh, third party uh, assets and our own assets ever since. Greg, tell us about the history of your firm and some of the people involved. Acumen Capital uh, originally came into play when Stuart Conway left Absa Bank where he had managed a fixed income business for them for many years. And he had a colleague at ABSA, Mark O'Brien. And when they left uh, ABSA, I think it was in 2002, could have been 2003, they set up a, a boutique broking uh, sort of tailor product outfit um, and used their relationships with banks and their experience in the fixed income market to really tailor product, niche products for end uh, users and institutions. Uh, along the same time as broking product and, and um, structuring um, solutions for various end users, they uh, continued to trade their own balance sheet in a proprietary manner. And uh, when I joined them in 2007, it was really where we steered the focus uh, of the company. So um, when I arrived, they'd been around for four or five years. They'd been successful, very successful in what they had been doing in terms of the brokerage income, uh, fee income that was coming into play, and uh, their expertise in providing um, these products. But the one area where I felt that they were incredibly lacking was uh, actually digging down into what, what they were doing with the balance sheet, how they were uh, expanding it, leveraging it, and, and what how we could better that um, in terms of actually creating um, a fund management business. Having come from Peregrine with the, the hedge fund sort of uh, exposure I'd got in the early days and having set that up from scratch, uh, there were quite a few uh, areas where, which were very obvious to me in terms of uh, where we could um, expand meaningfully and actually provide um, a meaningful uh, product uh, to end users in, in the hedge fund space. Uh, so that was the history really. I, I, in 2007 to 2009 there was a lot of kicking around. The other thing I must say that we found when we started comparing our, our approach to risk and our management of risk was that we all had a very similar style. We'd all had interest rate backgrounds. We'd all been very familiar with cross product use, so OTC derivatives being swaps and fraws, uh, government bonds. But we had all had a very uh, simple use of these instruments in terms of how we expressed our views. We didn't have very complex uh, outlooks, overlays. It was all really vanilla stuff. And what we found was if we combined our strategies and tweaked uh, some of the risk management, we actually found that we uh, could increase the risk, uh, increase the return 
while actually decreasing the risk. So for instance, instead of having a linear curve trade, we found that we could map that into a box trade, have a similar outcome, but have far less uh, binary risk in terms of the curve flattens or steepens. If you've got a box trade, you're really just looking at a nominee across two different yield curves. And you, the comfort of running the trade is infinitely greater, risk is less, use of uh, margin is less, and the result wasn't meaningfully less. In, in many instances, it was similar. So that was quite a revelation. And having gone down the route of exploring, um, expressing ourselves as uh, three people as opposed to one, that was also uh, one of the big motivating factors to actually manage money collectively um, and uh, launch that side of the business. Thank you.